Proverbs chapter number two. It's probably the first time they said amen in church is what I'm just going to find out. who they, No, no. Proverbs chapter two. Great to have a number of visitors with us here today at First Baptist Church. We're so glad you're here. Hopefully you found a, a warm, welcome place and you got one of our continued mugs. If not, stop by on the way out. We're glad you're here this morning. We're continuing in our series on our quest for wisdom out of Proverbs chapter number two. And I'm excited because God has uniquely set up a system for you and I to be able to get the wisdom that we need to live this life. I love the fact that God gives it to us, offers it to us. We'll find out today that if we seek after it, He'll give it to us. He doesn't dangle it out there and say, oops, just missed it, oops, just missed it. He says, you can have this thing, this wonderful thing we call wisdom. Wisdom that we all need. I don't know about you, but I'm not that smart. Oh, we think we're smart sometimes. This past week, Lord bless us, we looked at getting a couple of vehicles, and I'll tell you, if there's one thing that I really don't know, it's vehicles, All right? There's other things that maybe have a little more knowledge on, computers and some things like that, but man, Brother Turnbull and some of the other people out here, you guys are, are knowledgeable about vehicles. I'm not, so I got to pray right there and ask God to help me. I don't know what sounds, I mean, I know what a bad sound is, but I don't know what a bad sound means. You know, right? I mean, some of you are like, oh, that's going to be your, your vacuum hose of the whatever. And, and I'm like, hey, you know what? Put a new back tire on back there. Put some gas in it. Make it run. Fill up the headlight fluid. We need, we need wisdom. Not only about vehicles, we need wisdom for our families. Moms, dads, husbands, wives, we need wisdom. We can't begin to know how to live the right way without wisdom from God's Word. I need wisdom for how to work the right way. At your job, with your coworkers, wisdom. How to answer questions and, and maybe questions that you're asked about the Lord and, and you don't know, but you need wisdom. You see, we all need wisdom. And in Proverbs chapter 2, we have a challenge about finding and seeking wisdom. If you look in Proverbs chapter 2, in verse number 1, in Proverbs chapter 2, the writer says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words... And hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as hid treasures. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment, and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Lord, I thank you for this passage of scripture. Lord, I thank you for the time that we have this morning. I'd ask you would give me the wisdom that I need right now. Lord, I've tried to do my part and study. But Lord, I need your help and your power right now. Lord, these people, as they listen, I ask that you would take your word and you would touch hearts with it. I ask you would bind the devil and his demons and not let them have any, any kind of control or, or, or distract anyone in the service, Lord, but that our hearts would be touched by your word. We'd respond to you. Lord, do, Lord, do something that we cannot do, that only you can do. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Last week, we began to open up this passage of Scripture. Proverbs, a phenomenal book filled with wisdom for us. All of it's true. None of it's an error. It's promises. It's promise. I love the book of Proverbs because it just gives us wisdom after wisdom after wisdom. In fact, Proverbs uses, I talked about this last week, three words. It uses understanding, knowledge, and this word wisdom. Just to explain this briefly again, uh, knowledge is to know something. You may know the Bible. You may know a verse in the Bible. That means all, only the only thing that that means is that you know it. You can say it. Maybe you have a, a verse in your house, and, and that doesn't mean that you're living that verse or applying that verse. It just means you have a verse in your house. And there are many people, unfortunately, that know the Bible. But all that means is that they know the Bible. Understanding, as we look at that in Proverbs, begins to, begins to open that up. And it, what it means is that not only do you know it, but you know what it means. You understand that concept. Now, not only do you know it, you can say it. You say, well, this is what it means in my life. It doesn't mean yet that you do it. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom is knowing it, understanding it, and now doing it. 
How many times have we got ourselves into trouble, not because we didn't know something, because we didn't understand something from the Bible, but because we didn't do it? How about when the Bible says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak? How many times has your mouth got you into trouble before? Not because you didn't know it, not because you didn't understand it, but because you didn't have wisdom, didn't do it. And so here we come to this passage, and I have entitled this message, A Quest for Wisdom. I would subtitle it today, How Hard Are You Peddling? I shared this particular story about when in Chicago, and I want to now apply it this morning to this particular section of Scripture. We're in Chicago about two weeks ago. My family and I took a a vacation with the kiddos. While we were there, we went on a 12-mile bike ride along Lakeshore Drive, beautiful section of town uh, there along Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. My daughter, Danielle, has just now learned to ride a bicycle. In fact, after that point, uh, she's riding more, but she just learned to to get off the training wheels. And so that day, we did not take her bike or my bike with us to Chicago. So I rented a bike and then rented this little thing that's pulled behind the bike called a Weehoo. I don't know why that's called a Weehoo, but that's what it's called, a Weehoo. That particular brand of Weehoo. What this little Weehoo does, it hooks to the person's bike who's going to pull it. And this little Weehoo just follows it. And there's pedals on it. The pedals do nothing. We'd been pedaling about six or seven miles. I get off and I said, man, I am tired. And Danielle, my little six-year-old daughter, says, boy, Daddy, I'm tired too. I said, Danielle, why are you tired? I've been pedaling the whole time, Daddy. I said, Danielle, no, you haven't even sit back there riding. You've not been pedaling. You ain't doing nothing. I'm pulling you as a dead wing back of my bike. She goes, no, Daddy, I'm pedaling so hard. And she was pedaling, but not doing anything. I want to challenge us this morning along this regard with wisdom. How hard are you pedaling? You see, sometimes we want to hitch our bike to someone else's and say, Pastor, I'm not going to look at this. I'm going to follow you. P- Pastor, pedal really hard for me, would you please? Boy, we're both tired, aren't we? You know, Mom, you know, Dad, um, you know, I just want to hitch my bike to your bike, and we can gain wisdom from, from someone else, but this passage is now dealing with a personal decision that you and I will now ourselves seek for wisdom. We looked at that last week. But today I want to look at those action words. If we, Would you look at that passage again? There are eight verbs. Last week I asked you to underline these words if you do that in your Bible. I would remind you again and point out these words. If you look back through it, these first four verses, there are eight action verbs the first one is found in verse number one my son if thou wilt here it is receive my words and second one hide my commandments with thee verse number two so that thou third one incline thine ear unto wisdom and fourth one apply thine heart to understanding verse number three yea if thou number five criest after knowledge number six and liftest up thy voice for understanding number seven if thou seekest her as silver number eight and searchest for her as for hid treasures this next point i want to look at is to obtain wisdom it is a dedicated decision i look at these eight particular words i think they fall into some categories for us but i don't find these words i don't think you do either to be passive I don't see a word that says, if you sit back, if you relax, if you hitch your wee-hoo to a bicycle and ride along and pedal when you want to. I look at these eight words and I see someone taking a dedicated decision and making a choice to search for wisdom that we so desperately need. We need wisdom. We live in a day and age where we want things to be easy, not hard. We want things to be fast, not slow. If there's a shortcut, we want to find it. And I'm guilty of that as well. Put the chicken coop in at my house a few weeks back, or chicken run, I should say. If you've not heard about that, look up that sermon. And that sermon I talked about when I smacked my wife with a two by eight. Accidentally. I had to put some 12 foot posts in the ground. First night, I tried to dig one of these posts, 12-foot posts in the ground and put it in about 4, 48 inches in the ground, a little frost level. I found out this is a hard task to dig in my ground. Now, some ground is easy to dig at. Mine's not that ground. And so I began to look for a post hole digger. 
Not a post hole digger that you had to do manually, but a gas powered post hole digger. Because listen, men, you and I, men, we know this. What's better than using a power tool? Right? If you can use your arms or use a power tool, I'm for, for the power tool. If it's got a big motor, tremendous. If you take the muffler off, even better. If you dig the hole 30 feet, you only need it for two feet, that's fine. You can always fill it in. Well, thankfully, one of my friends had one, and they brought it over. And I tell you what, the first night I had, I had begun to, to dig that hole that I had spent about a half an hour and got down about eight inches. All right, now that's not a half hour of one shovel looking at it. That was attacking this dirt. It was clay. It was hardened. This post hole digger shows up, and that same spot took about two minutes. He said, this is good. Let's move on to, let's move on to hole number two. Hole number three, and, and ten or nine holes later that day, my goodness, we were done. Problem is, as we search for wisdom, there is not an automatic gas-powered post hole digger that we can use. I see in this passage eight action words that you and I must apply in our life to look for wisdom. If you look with me, please, in those first two I see an attitude. An attitude, the first two in the first verse, if you receive it or take it and hide it. So a few weeks ago, I was getting my hair cut at the barber shop. The boys were with me. And they happened to have a game show playing on the television. Come to find out that the game show was, I think, called something like Let's Make a Deal. I'd never seen it before, never seen it since, and it was having me playing in the barber shop. It intrigued me because in this particular game show, uh, the contestants would, would get a prize, and then apparently they would have a chance to trade that prize for something that could potentially be better. And we watched person after person trade their prize for something that was potentially better, but actually worse. I think it was Johnny, perhaps James, they were both with me. I think it was Johnny that said, Boy, Daddy, if I had that prize, I just would keep it. And I say, Is that so, Johnny? Because I remember when you and I were playing a game recently, and you traded for another one and then lost it. He goes, Oh. <laughs> but that's how we apply wisdom sometimes. We know what God says, but we're looking for something different. We think something better. You see, there's sometimes what God answers me and what I'm supposed to do is not the answer that I'm really looking for. The answer that, that I want is, yeah, go ahead, speak your mind, but that's not what God says. Go ahead, you don't have to walk by faith, you can walk by sight, but that's not what God says, is it? And we, we treat it like that game show, looking for something better, but here the first attitude that I see is to receive it, to take it. You can always reject or receive wisdom from God. And here the writer says, I want you to receive it, to take that wisdom. The first thing, the attitude is, attitude is to receive it. It's clear but hard. Trust is clear but hard. To obey, to have faith. Often it's clearer than our flesh, our mind wants to make it. I receive it. And the second attitude is to hide it. Or here it is, to hoard it. I read about these two elderly women twin sisters in, uh, in California, they had such a terrible hoarding habit, I found this article, that they caused a massive influx in the rat population in Los Angeles. For whatever reason, these women decided to feed and nurture the local rats, including the rats living in their house. When they passed, they took out bags and bags full of dead rats. As you know, rats don't need any help breeding and being a menace. But with the help of these ladies, they estimate that at a minimum, the rat population in L.A. increased by a minimum of tens of thousands, and some experts said up to 500,000 additional rats because of these two women. That's a problem. That is a problem. They were hiding, hoarding these things. I wonder if we ever do that with God's wisdom. Try to have a massive influx of God's wisdom in our house because of what we're seeking. A massive influx of God's wisdom at our job because of what we're doing. Have we affected anyone with God's wisdom because we've been hiding or hoarding it? There's an attitude to receive it and to hide it. But then I see an application, the next two verbs I see in verse number two, to incline that is to prick up the ears and to hearken. When I thought of that, I could only think of having young children. 
my kids were young, kids have a way of picking up on the things you don't want them to pick up on. How do they know that the words they shouldn't say are the ones, only ones they hear? I don't know how that is. It's, it's a special talent that children have. But they also now love parent talk. I don't know about you and your kids that they love parent talk, but if Doreen and I, my wife and I, lower our voices, our kids cease from talking. They know that obviously mom and dad are talking about something good. Johnny, my 10-year-old, he's the worst at this thing. All of a sudden, he'll be in the back of the car, and I'll want to talk to, to my wife, to read in the front seat. I'll say, honey, and I'll go down to that, you know, that private talk to your husband and wife, right, honey? And all of a sudden, you see Johnny like this. <laughs> right? He's pricking up his ears. He's trying to incline his ears, trying to hear what's going to be good for sure. There may be, mom and dad may be cooking up a surprise. Mom and dad, maybe, you know, and so we'll play with that sometimes. But I wonder if we ever, with God's wisdom, prick up our ears, incline our ears, say, God, I need to listen to you. You know, in Lamentations, it says that it is good that a man both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. You're looking for wisdom. Sometimes you got to stop and listen. Say, God, speak to me. Man, our minds begin to run a thousand miles an hour. We run through scenarios. How can I do this? How can I fix this? How can I solve that? And you just got to lean forward and listen. Incline thine ear and prick up your ears. Or also, it says here, to apply thine heart to understanding. The idea there in the word is to build a house. Actually, to set up your tent. I'm not really an outdoors guy. I enjoy being outside, but some of you men, you're just outdoors men. If, if you left today with nothing more than a Swiss Army knife, you could you know, survive for the next 35 years. If I had a Swiss Army knife, I'd hopefully survive, and I'd still have just one Swiss Army knife that would be just as sharp as, as it is right now. But some of you are just outdoor men, and I appreciate that, and I love being out there, and I love going on our Man Up Camp every year. If you have not been men, you need to make plans to go next year. We go in the middle of almost nowhere. There's no running water. We bring our own water in. There's no working facilities. We are roughing it. But you have to set up a tent. You pick a spot, and you put that tent down, and that's where you're at. That's my spot. You know it's hard to set up a tent on top of another tent, right? What this verse means when it says to this word to apply thine heart, it says set up your tent, plant yourself right there and do that. That's your spot. That's your spot. And what the writer is telling us is once you listen and hear the wisdom from God, that's your spot. That's what you're looking for. Do that right there. There's an application. But I see an attitude, an application. I see an aspiration. The next verse, if you cry after knowledge, to look for it, to call it out. I'm looking for wisdom to cry for it and lift up thy voice for understanding. There's an outward expression in this aspiration that says, listen, this is what I'm looking for. Everyone would know if you're crying and lifting up your voice what you're seeking. It's not, a, just a, it's not just a secret. It's out there. I'm looking for God's wisdom. I'm looking for wisdom. And last, I see those last two verbs in verse number four, ambition. Seek for it as for silver and search as for a hid treasure. You see, obtaining wisdom is a dedicated decision. How hard are you pedaling? Are you just hitching your, your little wee-hoo to the back of a bike of someone else saying, listen, give me some wisdom? Or are you taking these eight action words saying, God, I want to search your wisdom out. I want to apply your word in my heart so that I don't sin against you. Lord, I, I need your wisdom how to live the life I'm supposed to live and, and be the, the man or the woman I'm supposed to be in whatever way of life you may be in. I, I want to live the right way. God, I need your wisdom. You see, some people just want to hand it to them. But here God says, you've got to seek for it. You've got to look for it. It's got to be an ambition, a goal. And then, probably my favorite part of this passage, 
You see it in verse number 5 and 6 and 7, 8, and 9. Because not only is it, is it a dedicated decision, it's a determined decision. God says here that if you do this, verse number 5, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God for the Lord giveth. Help me, what's the next word? For the Lord giveth wisdom. Who gives it? The Lord. Who does he give it to? Those people who are doing those things, looking for it in those first four verses. If you want wisdom, you can have it. I don't just get it because I'm the pastor. I get it if I seek for it. But I'm not the only one who can get it if I seek for it. You can have it. My child, Johnny, can have it. My wife can have it. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. This is a promise that if you seek for this, God says, I will give you wisdom. Not only is it found in this passage, it is found throughout the Bible. In Deuteronomy chapter number 4, verse 29. But if thou from thence shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Proverbs 8, 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Luke eleven nine, 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Throughout the Bible, God gives this promise. If you seek for wisdom, if you look for it, if you seek it and ask for it, I will give it to you. That's what God's promise is. You see, if I seek for wisdom, I will receive wisdom. That is what will happen. Not maybe, not if, it will happen. God promises it. You receive understanding, as the verse says, and you receive preservation. God will be a buckler and safety for you. There's something special in verse number 7, if you look there. So kind of finish up the sermon. Something that I caught when I began to study this passage that I had not caught before. I love studying the Bible because I always find new things. I'm like, Lord, you are such a good God, and the Bible is such an incredible book. Verse number 7, it's a special little phrase there. It says, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Who is a he? It's God. Lays up what? Sound wisdom for whom? The righteous, those who are seeking it. What that means is this. God is setting aside special sound wisdom for you. You have a storage unit with your name on it. He's laying up sound wisdom for the righteous. God's not caught off guard. He's not saying, uh-oh, someone's asking more. He said, you know what? I've got wisdom right here. I've got, I'm laying up, I'm, it looks like planning ahead, laying up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's setting aside some wisdom just for you, just for me. That means he knows what I'm going to be going through. Isn't that great? That God knows what I'll face tomorrow and he's laying up sound wisdom for me and for you. He knows what you'll hit next week. He knows what you'll hit five years from now. God knows and he's laying up sound wisdom just for you. And just for me. And if I seek for it, I can get it. But I wonder how many times we hit a situation, we hit a question, we hit a problem, and God has a storage unit full of wisdom, a state, a country, a world, a universe, full of wisdom, just for me, just for you. And we hit that situation, and instead of seeking it, instead of searching for it as for hid treasure, we just go on our way and live like we want to live. You see how hard are you pedaling? God says you, I'll give you so much that you won't know what to do with this wisdom. I'll give you so much that you can't handle this much wisdom. Just come to me. Just seek for it. And you'll find me if you search with all your heart. You need God's wisdom today to live? You need some special wisdom? He's got it. He's laid it up for you. 
Now we have to seek it and ask him for it. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the wisdom, Lord, that you so graciously give to us. Lord, the promise that you'll give us this wisdom. Lord, too often we live in our own thoughts, our own failures. Lord, help us seek your face. I wonder who would say, Pastor Howell, as you're speaking this morning, God was doing something in my heart. And I want to seek his wisdom. Maybe I've said I wanted God's wisdom, but I've never really began to apply myself after it or seek after it. Would you pray for me that I'd have the wisdom that God has for me, that I'd, I'd seek it and, and I need that? Would you pray for me that I'd, I'd get that wisdom and, and seek for it? Who would say, yeah, Pastor Howell, would you pray for me this morning? Amen, amen, amen. I need that, Pastor Howell. Amen. Amen. I wonder if someone would say, you know, Pastor Howell, this morning, would you pray for me? There's a special situation in my life that I really need God's hand on. There are times in our life that, that God takes us through a time we really need him. Who would say, Pastor Howell, would you pray for me in a special way because I'm in a particularly difficult situation? Would you pray for me that God would give me just special wisdom today? Amen. 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 I wonder if there's someone here this morning you would say, you know, Pastor Howell, I've, I've never trusted Christ as my Savior. If I die today, I'm, I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. I'm not sure, but I'd like to be sure. When you pray for the other folks, would you pray for me that I would know about that? I just, I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. I've never trusted Christ as my Savior, but I'd like to know. Would you just slip your hand up and slip it back down? I'll call no more attention to you than I did anyone else. Amen. I'd love to pray for you. Amen. See those hands? Anyone else? Amen. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to stand for an invitation. That time with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, if the Lord's touched your heart, I encourage you to come and, and pray and begin that quest, that search for wisdom, because God says, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you're not sure you're on your way to heaven, we'd love to open the Bible and show you a man if you're a man, a lady if you're a lady. We'd love to help you on that quest and find out how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. We'd ask you to do those things today. Lord, we thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for working this morning. Lord, I pray for those folks who have been touched by you this morning. Lord, I pray that they would begin to seek your face. Lord, there's some folks who have a special need, a particular difficult situation. And Lord, I pray that you would meet their need for wisdom in a very, very special way. Lord, you've promised, you've promised that if we seek you, we will find you. I'd ask you to show themselves to you, Lord, and those folks who raise their hand about salvation. I ask that you would help them today to decide to follow you and trust you as your Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.